I've been working on my space here and I'm going to show you what I did to redo it. But the real reason I'm filming today is to film next door. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey, it's George, and I'm back at Andrea and Friends Antique Mall, and this is just a really quick stop. Well, it hasn't been quick for me. I've been here for a day and a half redoing and reorganizing everything, but I wanted to show you really quickly what I did in my space here, and then we're going to go to another place that we haven't been before in St. Pete. Maybe it's kind of mean, but I just want to whet your appetite. We are going to come back and do a jewelry episode at Andrea and Friends, because look at this room that I never showed you before. Jewels, jewels, jewels and boy do they have a lot, so I can't wait to show you all this, but we've got to keep on schedule. I have a very small space here, and so putting a lot in a small space is the trick, and I really emphasized boudoir this time because there's so much jewelry in the mall already, and I have a little bit of jewelry in here, but they have really phenomenal pieces, so I decided that I was going to do more accessory pieces factices and purses and boudoir items, dresser jars, Lennox porcelain ladies, hats, or a different type of collector. A whole flat of coins. I just put those in yesterday. We've already sold $120 worth, so that was exciting. And then this shelf, you can see everything from one of my last pieces of Royal Cauda from the big collection I've been selling to a Swan TV lamp. Is your enthusiasm showing? Mine is. I'm excited about how this turned out. A little bit of Asian. I have a whole section now of Native American because they just opened last year the James Museum in St. Petersburg, which is a museum of Western art, including Native American. So that was something new. I just put this really cool hanging lamp fixture from the early 80s in today. Everything from kitchen and useful items to Disney, but we're going to see a lot of emphasis on Victorian and true antiques here. I have a huge selection of baseball and sports cards as well. But here we have two wonderful Victorian marble top tables that I haven't had out before. A really nice large gold assayer scale. I've had a smaller scale at the shows this season, but the big scale came here. The samovar. This is new to me. This is painting over an engraving that was very popular to do around 1900 to 1910. So you see the painted details on her sleeves and on the newspaper where they took a little bit of watercolor. They watercolored the flowers. It was a nice way to take a hand tinted engraving and make it more special. Mirror on the back wall. This is a new piece to me here. This lovely tray from about 1900 with Cupid leading the lovely lady down to the path of perdition, I'm sure. There's Evelyn Nesbitt again, speaking of a lovely lady who was led down the path of perdition. Lots and lots of little things. Easter's coming, so I had to put out Franklin mint eggs and a Yadro bunny with flowers. And of course, birds, because, well, the Lalique bird is Cute for spring, I thought. So lots of spring colors here. Nice Dresden tray, a couple of Fenton cranberry pieces. I love these mirrors that I got in Indianapolis. I'm surprised they haven't sold, but this space needed to look bigger, and mirrors are a great way to make a space look bigger, so I brought them in. This little phone stand. So I'm very happy with how the booth turned out, even though it's rather small and rather tight. I think there's enough things to have someone come in and spend a little time. But now we've got to get to the next door because we've only got 45 minutes till they close. I'm in front of Vintage Modern St. Pete. I've been working on my space here and I'm going to show you what I did to redo it. But the real reason I'm filming today is I have been wanting, hoping I'd get done soon enough one evening, which is today, to film next door. This is Lion Paw Antiques, and Lion Paw has really great stuff. 
and my friend Sam is the owner. It's a really cool shop. There's a lot more to St. Pete antiquing. In fact, this whole block is pretty much all antique stores. At some near future date, we're gonna to have to go into Refound and show her stuff because she's got really great French market type furniture and tons of really good jewelry. And this Pity Patch porch is great for porch items and that sort of thing. But today we're gonna to look at Lion's Paw. Lion's Paw has been here for, gosh, a while now. I think maybe 12 or 15 years at least. And I'm gonna do a little bit of window shopping because I'm not sure how much of this we're gonna be able to get to from the inside of the store. There's an old carousel horse, a big stained glass lamp and a Fenton lamp there. This is a really fun front entrance here. They've got this very neat and original French bicycle poster with the races from 1889. We see lots of reproductions of these, but this one does seem to have the age that would be correct. A lot of these were framed in the 60s and 70s, and I believe that's the situation here. And like me, the owner of the shop really likes Blanco glass, so I'm going to see if I can get back to show you some of these pieces. The yellow opaline is hard to find. Between the bird and the butterscotch, those are both Italian. He's got this piece down here and this one here, and the purple with the elongated bubbles, which was in the line a very brief period of time. They didn't do that dark purple for long at all. Okay, so how's this for a stunner? This is by an artist named Mark Arnett, and these are driftwood chairs. They are like thrones. They're amazing. They were commissioned at a cost of $10,000 originally, and they have come out of their mansion and are here for sale for $5,500. So a relative bargain, but they're just incredible. Look at all the work and matching everything and polishing it and actually making it comfortable to sit on. It's quite a feat, if you ask me. Lovely big bronze. They definitely have a lot of architectural pieces in here and things that would be for a rather large home interior. But then they have a lot of fun stuff for everybody too. So it's a nice blend of things here. I like the little cherub lamps with the harps. Those look like something from the 1960s with those interesting balloon shades. Here we have some designer furniture. This is Paul McCobb. Paul McCobb is a well-known designer. He was a product engineer in plastics and in 1945 he opened his own design firm. And by 1950 he introduced the Planner Group. And the interesting thing was that he was able to take inspiration from Shaker style and older American styles that were very sparse and spartan, but adopt them to a modernist vibe to bridge the gap between modernism and traditionalism in a way that makes his pieces very functional and versatile for a lot of homes now. I see Paul McCobb furniture in a lot of places that seem unlikely where the other furniture is traditional, so he's a designer worth getting to know because you may find him in places you wouldn't expect. This is a neat looking uh, mid-century lucite and glass table, priced at $4.95. This set is American and it's walnut, but it's got those great Y-shaped backs that give it that modern appeal from the 1960s. A pair of Danish side tables here. So you really do see good modernist furniture in this store. But there's a whole lot of stuff in this store. It's not limited to just that. So let's take a look at what else he's got. This is a very pretty antique bohemian fruit basket lamp here. And I love seeing them lit because they really pop in that way that shows you the specialness of them. The most, most of these were made in Czechoslovakia in the teens and 20s. Now they do have jewelry here and they have some high-end jewelry as well. A lot of these are estate jewelry pieces. There's a very pretty Edwardian filigree ring with diamonds in there. Lovely cameo. I believe that's in gold. Look at that fun spider crawling around back there. It's not really crawling, it's a piece of jewelry. And then Miriam Haskell, of course, is very popular in costume jewelry right now. We have a pair of earrings by her. Here's something that's a little more to a Floridian market because it's sterling with coral embedded in it. Behind it is a really nice Victorian garnet pin and another finely carved cameo. 
This is a Second World War patriotic flag pin. I should have blamed the George. Oh, I'm, yes. <laughs> yes. Blame George. That's always the answer. It, uh, George, Nancy, it won't Nancy, get you George. anywhere. Yeah. Hi, Nancy. Hi, George. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. George has low self, self-esteem. So. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I've never been accused of that before. <laughs> I've been accused of a lot. I've been accused of years. <laughs> George is also a very, a very, very good sport. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Well, Harry's got a uh, pedigree, that's for sure. Urns here, the snakes, are mycin. And it's really neat to see a pair of them. And you'll notice the decoration at the top is a little different, even though they were together as a pair. One is cobalt and one is in white. And I imagine that they were intended to be shown separately in separate rooms. This is a very pretty sterling and cranberry glass 1890s Victorian era salt dip set. This would have been something that would have been a wedding presentation or for a very special occasion. And it's priced like it at $6.75, but they are very hard to find intact now. This is Meiji period, the last period in Japan, right around 1905 to 10, I would say this was made, the bird on the branch. The Meiji period ends in 1911. And then these spoons are enameled in guilloche, and they are David Anderson from Norway. You see some other interesting enamel work here in these Art Deco dresser sets with the enameling. And speaking of Deco, look at that great chrome fish lamp. That's really cool. Now, beetle stuff is very collectible. I did the appraisal for the manager of Pearl Jam when they ended up doing well and the manager and his wife started collecting Beatles stuff and they had an amazing collection but they did not have this clock it's really hard to find it's from 1964 it is an original from the day and it, they have lots of hair fake hair glued on because of course the haircuts were the big thing that made them so different at first with that and the fact that Tens of thousands of girls would stand there and scream to where you couldn't hear the concert. That is, isn't that cool? Yeah, this is a really neat uh, lithograph, and it's signed, and it's Harry Sternberg, 1930s. This guy's not having a good day. <laughs> not bad. And Harry decided that I needed a hat. What do you think? I actually don't do hats very well, but this one's not too bad. No, it's not. Fits no. this way better than yeah, this no, way. Don't, don't do the Napoleon. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I'm more of an eyeglasses guy. Hi, welcome. So does that lamp come apart? Because I actually love it. This is a Lalique Laird de fact team. It was made as a store display, and that makes it really rather tremendous. It's priced at eight ninety five. I'm sure that was three times that much when it was new. Now, if you're looking for a bargain, and there are some really pretty things. These Joe St. Clair art glass perfumes. This nice bronze with the trunk face. This is a very pretty enameled perfume bottle. The Swedish glass piece, this mother of pearl handle. This is a nice Mary Gregory tea warmer, an unusual form. And at 60% off, this is only going to be $60, which is actually rather inexpensive for what it is, tempting. And then moving on, we've got a really cool round spool display. We see lots and lots of the square ones. We rarely see the round ones. This is neat because it rotates. It's interesting because the top opens, and that's how you spin it. And then you have your drawer under here so that you can take out individual spools. That's really something different, and it's on a metal pedestal that they set it on, so that's not part of it. It's just the round part, but 2800 but it is that scarce. One thing Sam really likes, and I'd show you if he was here today because he always wears it, are turquoise cuffs, and it's nice to see men's jewelry. 
because we see a lot of really nice women's jewelry, but not so much in men's. But the Navajo and these sterling and turquoise pieces really do have a lot of followers. And in, and you can see prices. The one with the watch in it is priced at three seventy-five. This is a really neat Thunderbird squash blossom rather than the traditional, and this one is Old Pond, so that means it's going to be back into the 1960s or prior when such things were traded as pond material rather than being sold to roadside tourists. Belts with conchos, the Navajo squash blossom belt here is $8.95, sterling and turquoise. And these are pretty realistic prices. This sort of jewelry is very popular right now. It does not go cheaply, and most people can identify it, at least the look of it, pretty readily. A little bit of Victorian architectural salvage here. These are fun to build in or hang in windows in a house to give some design. And it's a little different than what we see in the rest of this space, which is, again, more mid-century. A lot of Danish pieces. I think this is a stunning piece. I showed it in an Instagram one day. It is a signed seagull figural platter with the ocean waves. It is just beautiful, in my humble opinion. This is one of the tallest and narrowest sets of office file drawers that I've seen, which is great because you can get a ton of information or whatever you are putting in little drawers into a relatively small floor space by going up almost to the ceiling. And that is priced at $24.95. Again, unusual shapes. They really do seek the unusual here. This is a neat old tin lithograph sign for De Laval cream separators. She's very fond of her cow. This would be from about 1890, and it's got the original frame. It's not in great shape, but it exists. And with this sort of thing, Finding them in great shape that haven't been restored is very hard. They have it priced at $1,500. And they show various places that these are sold all over the West, as well as in Philadelphia and in Canada. I like this wall mirror. I enjoy them when they have the hanging racks. This would have been in the foyer of an arts and crafts era or a late Victorian house. But look how great the hooks are. These are real. You don't really see reproductions of this kind of hardware that look this good. Hakata dolls are starting to make their way into antique stores. These were very popular as Japanese tourist pieces because they showed old ways of Japanese living that had already passed by. This is Harry's booth, and I wanted to show the Paul Frankel circa 1940 deco rattan end tables. I love the shapes. I think these are priced for the pair at $650. I have a hard time finding this sort of thing in good condition anywhere at this point. This is really the beginning of Rattan furniture in the Art Deco period as we know it. I think they're just splendid. Harry was an interior designer in Los Angeles, and actually his biggest account that he's told me about was Linda Lavin, who was the star of the TV show Alice hired him to redo her house when she was at the peak of her fame. His space is a little different than a lot of the spaces in here. It has a lot of art and just a different feel because he sets it up more like a home. He's not afraid to put a dark accent wall in, for example, and have the other pieces just pop off of it. And then, of course, like everybody, he has his shelf items because we all have to have those. These are Heise New Era, I believe, but the frosted candle tops are the interesting and unusual thing there. More art and prints. Oh, this fellow seems to have lost his clothes. Hmm. And another lotus lamp. This is a little different variety, but I'm telling you, these things are coming back into style. This one's priced at $80. And here's someone who was a designer back in the day when this was new, saying, yeah, we're ready to have these in the antique and vintage market now, and I believe that's good timing. Here's a great old slot machine. This one is 1930s, the Art Deco design, and it's a quarter machine. 
quarters were a lot of money for people to gamble back then, so a quarter machine is going to be scarcer than a nickel slot or a penny slot. It's got this terrific eagle on it, and it's priced at $24.95. And then you've got gumball machines for a slightly more juvenile taste. This is a really great fire screen with all of the crests and Tyrolean eagles, clearly European. French clock is a Ringo Ferris, and that is a very good maker and movement from the Victorian era. It's got the cherub panels as inlays. There's the face. The French clocks were the fancy, beautiful clocks of the 1870s and 80s. That's really when I think France became known as the design leader for beauty and delicacy in Europe. And you can see why. Here's a neat little 1970s bar cart in brass. These are coming back in style. Brass is definitely a thing now. And this particular one is Hollywood Regency, as you can see, because it is glam and gold all the way. The top lifts off. It's even got a nice striped cocktail shaker and ice bucket and glasses set also from the 1960s. This is an interesting sign. Chester Police Department from New York. The Police Academy. Criminal Justice Institute. Neat slag glass lamp with the scenic shade. It's really neat when you see the metal detail all intact. These got broken very easily. You just had to knock it over once because this is lead. It's very soft. It's very easy to break. So finding them in good condition is the trick. And I love those pastel Easter colors in it. Slag glass lamps are definitely a better deal than they used to be. Only priced at $4.95, and there was a time it would have been $300 more. So if you like this style, it's a great time to be buying. Well, if this cat doesn't scratch me, I will have time to tell you that I am glad to have you with me. And also, if you wouldn't mind to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, it helps us and it doesn't cost you anything. And if you are interested in a membership, please hit join and you'll find out all about those and the different tiers and what comes with them. We also encourage you to hit the like button for this video, thumbs up, and click the bell to be notified of future videos, and leave a comment. We always like to hear from you. I'm going to have a chance to catch up on comments here pretty soon, so if you've left one in the last few videos, well, I will be looking soon. So let's get back to this video now. This is an amazing piece of art glass. And I believe this is a Florida craftsman because the woman depicted is very similarly dressed to the seminal woman on the Florida flag. And you see the palm trees and the birds. There are Florida craftsmen art galleries here in St. Pete amongst other galleries featuring local artists. St. Pete has really become an art town. Priced at $24.95. It is just amazing. It's several colors. They Talk about cameo glass in terms of layers, how many layers it is. There's always a clear layer on the outside that they carve back through, and you can see in this, there's an orange layer, a yellowish layer, a blue layer on the inside, and a blue layer on the outside. And each time they carve through a layer, the chances of the piece breaking increase exponentially because glass cools at different coefficients of cooling. And as a result, you end up with instability between certain colors. So the fact that this was so many colors carved inside and out and made it through production, you know, as many as 40% of these are lost in the process of trying to make them. That's why they're so special and that's why they cost what they cost. Nice black drop front, 1960s era when the black uh, oak pickling was a popular style and finish. And that's great because we're seeing a lot of black and white re interiors returning now. A couple of slot machines in original condition here. And I really like this rattan piece. It's a desk. It's got a couple of levels. The style of the drawers and the pulls. That's really neat. And then, of course, everyone's desk crazy right now because people are working and learning at home. So we've got this great Lucite one next to it. Also from the 70s, it just disappears between the mirroring and the lucite. It's almost like it doesn't exist. And it is a desk, but it's also a dressing table because the top appears to lift, as you see. 
and then you have a mirror underneath. So it was really intended as a vanity, but it would sure be useful in a lot of guises. It's priced at $13.95. Swordfish and sailfish are popular here, and when they taxidermy them, they almost turn to plastic because they have to do a lot to preserve the fish and that wonderful sail. This one's priced about 700, which is about right for the size. They have a dealer who specializes in high-end purses and handbags. So these are genuine Yves Saint Laurent and genuine Gucci. And yes, they're priced in the hundreds of dollars, but these are purses that cost in the thousands of dollars originally. If you're not hung up about having this season, you can have some really great vintage handbags that are true designer at a lot less than the price of new. This one is Burberry on the bottom. You can tell by the famous plaid design, and that one's priced at $650. These are very popular in certain sections of Florida and really where people with money congregate in general. Some more Yves Saint Laurent. Another Gucci with the crystal coating here. That's a little bit more unusual, and you can see the repeating logo, Hermes, is the uh, scarf on this particular bag. In the winter, she gets super depressed, so she and this scarf is Cartier. Then, yeah. This is a Fendi shoulder bag here. Then there are four more years that MCN Vistesos <laughs> with yeah. the body crossing handle. Good for when you're in a hurry or if you're worried about security. And then this is a Rhapsody bag by Yves Saint Laurent. And of course it's Florida, so you need a pair of snazzy sunglasses to go with, so why not Versace or Machino? Tom Ford, Salvatore Ferragamo, all sorts of big names here. This is another thing I haven't seen in a lot of other antique stores, but sunglasses, especially vintage, even if they're just American cheapies from the 50s and 60s, or non-designer Italian sell very well here, as you can imagine. Here's a neat binnacle made of brass. We're going to open it up and see the insides because the compass sits inside the binnacle. It is priced at 1200 There's another one next to it here, priced about the same, with a little different finish and an oak base which looks like something from maybe the 19-teens or 20s. A lot of people don't think of antique malls for instruments, but they actually can be a much better deal than a used music store. A lot of the older pieces will need some reconditioning, new pads on woodwinds, new valves perhaps on a trumpet or a coronet, new strings, but as long as the basic form is solid, having them restored is still often a lot cheaper than buying new. Look at this giant pond boat here. This thing almost is big enough for a child to ride upon. I can't imagine how a kid could handle something like this. I suspect it was mainly used as a model. This dealer has some fun stuff, including a bunch of original license plate toppers. And I want to show you these because there are reproductions galore of these now. They're not going to look like they were on a car. They're going to look perfect. They're going to seem as if they have never been used. They oftentimes are made of iron, which originally they would have been finished in something that was a little less prone to rust. So those are things to look out for because you want these. These are the original. Now these also are a few hundred dollars a piece because they're original and they're hard to find. 1940s and 50s vintage. Here is something we're starting to see coming into the antique and vintage world. Late 70s, early 80s with the Formica finish. A lot of these were made in Italy, but they're actually surprisingly substantial. This has the platform bed, the dresser, the mirror, and two nightstands priced at $29.95. And here is a Lane Brutalist. The Brutalist design is very blocky, Brutalistic modernism was very popular in the late 60s and early 70s. 
People wanted it to look substantial and it also reflected what was going on in society at that time where people started to build buildings in a more fortress-like way because they were worried about protesters breaking windows. See, we've been through this stuff before. And this was the response then. It's really great looking as furniture. I have to say a lot of the buildings from that era have not worn well with time because they're very sterile and foreboding. But in terms of furniture and interior items, brutalism really works. This dealer plaque from a China shop really tells us how much the markets have changed. This is Lennox China, made in America. Priced at 25, it's actually a pretty good deal for a dealer plaque. But look how they're boasting how it's decorated with 24 karat gold or precious platinum. Those features are the reason Lennox in many patterns is not as collectible now because people don't want to take care of 24 karat gold or precious platinum rings on their china because it requires hand washing and people want to be able to dish wash. This is fun because this is a lot of local interest local history. Printed sheet here is a bunch of postcards that you were to send out to your baseball loving friends when Tampa Bay finally got a baseball team here in St. Petersburg. The Rays have been to the World Series a few times now, including last year. This is an open house from the opening of the GE plant with the nice nuclear atomic logo on the left here in St. Pete. The nuclear plant is up the coast, thankfully far away. AAA construction from Treasure Island, Florida. That's an island right off of the coast here. It's hard to imagine that the islands off the Florida coast were hardly inhabited until the 1950s. People thought they were hard to get to and a nuisance, and then they became the place to be. And this is from the first time that the Tampa Bay Lightning won the Stanley Cup. I'm a big fan, and they won again this year. In fact, every Tampa team ended up in the championship in their league this year. I don't think that's ever happened before. This pipe stand says, for that tired feeling, it's carved in a way that looks like black forest carving from Germany. It's funny, back then, the idea was that the pipe would lift you out of that tired feeling. Souvenir here, this is a Tampa Bay Bandit football buckle. That team was owned in part by Burt Reynolds and they were very popular for their brief existence, much more popular than most of the teams in the USFL. This is a neat seat that would sit in the middle of a room and you'd have four chairs back to back where people could sit and face different directions. And if you've been following me a while, you've seen these before, but not in pink. These are Salviati, and they're only priced at $4.95, which for having the color in them makes me surprised they're still here because I sold mine with just the gold for $4.95. They're just so finely made. With the pink Latticino, you're looking at a mid-1960s date. They have a selection of pocket watches here, which is nice to see, and prices as low as $50, so they are definitely in the right zone for today. I, of course, get a kick out of Spiro Agnew there. Oh, yeah. It's funny how many watches were made of him, but yet I've never seen a Nixon watch. Some really pretty cameos here, and then these are neat because each of these, they're Knights of Columbus, Order of Elks and Order of Elks, and these are little uh, pendants that actually, I believe, if you open them up, are those dance cards in there? I don't know what those are. Let's take a look, yeah. if you don't mind. I'm curious. Oh, I remember these kind of lasers in my mind. And they clearly look like they were meant to hang on a chain of some sort. They're made of sterling. Let's see what uh, Harry's going to open up for us here. It's not for powder because it has a little clip here. In the middle here, it's signed Elizabeth. So that's what makes me think that they were, in fact, for dance cards. I just can't imagine what else would be worn as a locket in that era. Several Tiffany Sterling pieces. Tiffany and Company is typically later in production, but still nice and people like it. I like the crescents there and the rhinestones and the purple. Very nicely done. I'm not sure who did that set, but it looks like it could be Regency. I've been working on my space here and I'm going to show you what I did to redo it. I sold a whole bunch of stuff here over the winter season and I've replenished with some of my very best. I put in the Minton Queen's Beasts, which were a feature in one of my videos. It's a very rare set that was on Antiques Roadshow. And these are the Costa Boda catwalk faces. 
I have a whole shelf of cameras now, early diaphragm cameras to 1950s twin lens reflex. Here I did leave in the Jaru and one piece of Blanco, but I put the Meissen Hellenic Wars box next to it. That's another very expensive and rather refined piece. And you know, they do get that customer sometimes here. That's why I also put the Kuti throw on the bottom. And then this shelf is just full of interesting little ephemera. And this one is the other end of the market because everything in here is $6 each or two for 10. And I thought it would be really fun to just put a lot of interesting little things people remember from the past and see how that did. Because a lot of people who come are tourists. We're getting a lot of younger people who are first time buyers and collectors and they're still trying to figure out what they like. So I figured that this gives them potpourri. And then down the aisle here, past my friend Cliff's booth, where he has this really great George Nelson for Herman Miller lamp, is my booth. And it was pretty picked over after the winter season, so I brought in another Haywood Wakefield cabinet. This one actually has the glass doors and a nice little end table. And you'll see I really packed this place so full. But show season is over. I'm going up to Kentucky. The market's a little different there, so I didn't bring three shelves of Floridiana to Kentucky. I left it here fish and pelicans and all sorts of cute things. This table with the orange feature and my water bottle. I'm glad I saw that. I need to take that with me. This I went for a spring look. All of these pieces it took me about eight hours to redo, put it all in and price everything. But there's unusual Blanco like the little owl picture here, a stangle parrot, red wing pottery, more Costa Boda, pinups, Hager pottery, it just was really fun to get something else in here. And yes, I stacked it through the ceiling because I have more Haywood Wakefield furniture in here, this nice timbre front dresser. I have a little game area. Just put in the bar stuff here as well. And actually you already sold $100 out of here today as I was doing it, so that was fun. Lots of games. And then we've got some modern art, the William Block. And this is Olga Higgins. This one here, which I love the colors in, is just a Central Florida artist. But I thought they did that very nicely. And then amongst Tanala birds and Nilope deer is a lot more glass. Black Panther TV lamp there. And a Fenton handkerchief vase. Some more Tanala. We've got the decanter. Deco nude flower frog and our red and blue presentation here. So I've got basically every color of glass known to man, I think. And, you know, it's done really well. People are really enjoying buying a color spot or two for their house, especially if they're modernists, because, you know, all white and all brown gets to be pretty sterile if you don't decorate it somehow. And then this case, which is another Haywood Wakefield but does not have the glass, I'm using as a big shelving unit for all sorts of fun things. The elephant bookends I just got. Jewish songbooks from the Second World War issued by the Army. Very cute child's bowl. I do like to put some older things in just because we do get a lot of different people from all over the place and some people do have a taste for true antiques even if they come into a place called Vintage Modern. And Vintage and Modern, you know, that can go back to Arts and Crafts and Art Nouveau, so that's a hundred years. Nice set of Russell Wright under there, and a little Fiesta. The tall ship's print I thought was fun. And then we get into some soothing white and neutral tones in Hollywood Regency, if that's more your gig. Here we've got everything from comic books to toys to, well, toilet seat covers. and this rather specific advertising piece from a video store. It has been a long day of working my booth and filming. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope if you get to St. Petersburg, you come to the 2500 block of Central Avenue, where there are lots of antique shops and everything is open. And we will hope to see you here or somewhere down the road in another one of our videos where we're having another adventure. So we'll see you then. Have fun, happy collecting, and bye-bye for now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, 
click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!